Nick. Before we talk about uh, AEW Revolution and our predictions uh, and all the matches that's going to be going down on Saturday night, let's talk about this past Wednesday's AEW Dynamite then. So this past week's uh, Dynamite, this week's AEW Dynamite, actually started with the much-anticipated 30-minute Ironman match between Kenny Omega and the Bastard Pack. Uh, Omega was accompanied to the ring by uh, fellow elite members, the Young Bucks, with uh, Hangman Adam Page conspicuous by his absence. Uh, There was an awesome avalanche brain Buster from Pack onto Omega towards the uh, the beginning of the match that looked like it sucked. Uh, there, there was a, a, a really you know they they were quite stiff with one another from the word go. It was a very very stiff, very strong style match. Um, Omega won the first fall about halfway through the match with a steel chair shot or, or thanks to a steel chair shot uh, from Pack causing a disqualification for the first fall to Kenny Omega. Uh, Pack then uh, drives the chair into Omega's head one more time after the first fall goes down, weakening Omega even more, um, but perfectly setting up Pack to drop his black arrow uh, to even things up at one fall apiece. So some clever heel tactics there, despite the fact that he uh, lost the first fall through disqualification. Then there was a, a wicked falcon arrow by Pack off the ring apron with Omega landed hard uh, outside the ring. You could hear the thud as Omega landed from that one. Um, in another holy shit moment from Pack, uh, Pack drives Kenny Omega through a table which was set up on the outside with the shooting star press from the top turnbuckle to the outside, and that was pretty spectacular. Uh, Pack connects with a poison rana on Kenny Omega before applying the rings of Saturn, looking for a submission win uh, with only two minutes left on. On the clock, uh, Pack. Uh, I, I think Omega manages to get to the the, the ropes, um, but then Pack reapplies the the brutalizer or the wings, the rings of Saturn, as the clock t- ticks down to zero, um, bringing an end to this excellent 30 minute Ironman match. Uh, one fall apiece as the Bucks come in to see to their friend. Uh, there's a, there's a decision to restart the match under sudden death rules. And uh, with with a, a jump in knee strike and a one winged angel, Kenny Omega got the decisive pinfall over Pack in this very stiff, high impact and uh, ultra realistic match uh, between these two excellent wrestlers, two of the best wrestlers on AEW. But I love the hell out of this. There's there's some criticism on the the Facebook page that there were too many close to falls, too many kickouts. Uh, but I, I I enjoyed the hell out of this one. And like I said throughout my commentary of this match, you know it, it was stiff. It was hard hitting. It was realistic. Both wrestlers really went through a battle in this one here. And some of the moves just really made you wince, especially that uh, Falcon Arrow on the outside and the shooting star press through the uh, through the table and so much others. But uh, what impressed you about this match in particular and uh, about, you know, about the decision to go into sudden death uh, where Kenny Omega eventually got the second fall? Uh, give us your thoughts on this one, Nick. Uh, the impressive part was it was... A match on free TV, you know, they've given us this on an episode of Dynamite. This is something that we could have put onto any pay per view, and uh, yeah, we got it for free on on a two hour TV uh, show. Uh, it was just awesome. It's always going to be a uh, bit of fun of packs since back in the day. It didn't really, I don't watch too much New Japan, so wasn't a big. Uh, I didn't know much about Omega before AEW started. I've seen bits and bobs on YouTube, uh, but I'm just loving him works awesome and those two are just yeah like say it was stiff it was brutal it had you flinching uh there was a few moments uh yeah i think it was just absolutely an awesome match i I can't fault it um i'm not a massive fan of the sudden death thing i think you know if you uh it's a 30 minute match leave it as a draw you know fans would have still would have standed up you know they would have stood up and applauded it and just be like you, they wouldn't have felt like they'd been done out of anything if it had ended one or um, but obviously the pack had to lose then to set up the uh, the aftermath indeed indeed but to, one thing that I was really impressed with is a 30 minute match they usually drag they usually kind of you're kind of looking at your watch and you're kind of twiddling your thumbs and you're thinking oh when's this going to end especially if it's a, a WWE match or on Raw or Smackdown yeah. but this match just flew by it, it didn't seem like 30 minutes at all it seems you know 20 minutes tops it just absolutely flew by because the action was so good the fans were into it um, you know the, the moves were so awesome and these two just gelled I know that I know they've had matches before, Nick, but these two just gelled perfectly. So much chemistry between these two and uh, so much credit to, to Pac 
Um, you know, he, he had a good run of things to start off with in AEW, but he's had a few losses recently. But, you know, the losses don't really hurt him, to be honest with you. But um, I, 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 I've said this before, you know, that it'd be great if they could add a secondary title because I think yes. somebody like Pac would be perfect for a secondary title, you know, along the levels of, uh, along the level of, a, you know, an intercontinental type title um but uh, yeah a fantastic match really loved it and and like you say we, we don't deserve to watch something as good as that on free tv that really you know is a pay-per-view level uh, match and considering it opened the show as well even more impressive <laughs> but then as you alluded to nick after the match you had tony Giovanni. he, he was uh, started to interview pack on the stage area and uh, you had you had freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy came out only to be attacked by the bastard setting up their match at uh, Revolution on Saturday. So I know we're going to talk about the matches at Revolution very very soon, but uh, um, it's two very contrasting wrestlers. Um, but uh, that 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 was quite fun. That was really fun. And then we went into a, another match, a trios match uh, between uh, members of uh, the Inner Circle. And uh, the Jurassic Express, of course. So this match was fast-paced. It was a ton of fun. Uh, but Sammy Guevara was about to use Ortiz's loaded sock on the Jungle Boy. And then we saw Darby Allen uh, came from out of nowhere to strike Guevara, uh, allowing Jungle Boy to get the surprise pinfall, setting up um, even further Darby Allen versus Sammy Guevara, which was announced last week. Uh, that's going to be another match that's going to be going down at Revolution. Now, on last week's Wrestling with Jonas podcast, uh, we were asking the listeners questions, Nick, um, about whether there should be, as we just uh, spoken about, a mid-card title or a secondary title on AEW. And at the time, I suggested there should be maybe a trios title. Now, after watching this match, I'm even more convinced that a trios title in AEW would work a treat when you've got you know factions Ooh. like the Dark Order, you've got factions like Jurassic Express, uh, SCU, the Inner Circle, a trio title, but uh, you, the best friends, of course. But um, uh, I've got to say, I, I want your opinion on, on that in a moment. But uh, one person that really impressed me during this match, and he's not really impressed me up until this match, and uh, that might just be me not paying close attention, but it's Marco Stunts. Now, he's always been kind of the, the runt of the litter uh, alongside Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus. But here, I found that Marco... He really delivered, really demonstrated why he's an important part of that team. Um, but yeah, Marco Stunt, I'm becoming a bit of a fan of his where I wasn't before. Uh, but give us your thoughts on a, a, a possible trios title, which could work really well in AEW and the match as a whole. And, and Marco Stunt, are you a fan? Uh, yeah, on both parts. The trio belt would be amazing because it would stand mm. out as well. It would be something, you know, that's not anywhere else that I know of. Or if it is, it's obscure. Um yeah, I, I like the idea of a trio belt, and like I said, there's plenty of uh, people involved that could, you know, hold it, compete for it, keep it fresh. Uh, I think it's yes, a genius idea. And um, regarding stunt, yeah, he's like I say he's doing one of the little. He's the oh Christ, he's smaller than Spike Dudley, but he's kind of like that, you know, the, the little feisty guy, or you know, that just will go and go and go. He's like the Energizer Bunny, you know, the dude just does not stop, and he's just got the you can't help but you know feel for the guy. He's got that got. Uh, cliche but his little body and a big heart you know it's that kind of like you just root for him um, yeah yeah and you just, the fact that it's part of just jurassic express is just that whole all three all three of those guys uh I just love, yeah I, I love that team i think they're awesome yeah, they're my favourite. Especially Luchasaurus, I think there's big things in the in the pipeline for him. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Jungle Boy possibly gets uh, um, you know, uh, you know some some gold around his waist before Jurassic Express. But I'd love them to be tag team champions. I think they're a great team. They work really really well together. They're so over with the fans as well. Uh, but yeah, it's Marco Stunt in particular that kind of had a really good match, and he was the one that really kind of stood out and impressed me. And maybe they did it you know, uh, with a purpose to kind of put him over and, and get him over with the fans um, because it, the, the spotlight's always been on Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus. So a um, bit more of a spotlight this week on, on uh, Marco Stunt and I thought it worked really, really well. So another question for you then, Nick. So I'm, I'm not sure if you caught the Dark Orders video package where they were promoting uh, their match with SCU at Revolution, but towards the end, you had Eva Lono, he addressed Christopher Daniels and said that uh, when all is said and done, uh, you will be obsolete. Uh, so give me your thoughts on uh, who you, you know, what, what you think might be happening between the Dark Order and Christopher Daniels. Um, 
who do you think will be the the exalted one more importantly but was there a bit of a giveaway during the dark orders promo when evil owner used the word obsolete possibly leading us to believe that uh, matt hardy could be uh you know something uh to do with with the dark order maybe the exalted one but uh, it, it's been a bit of a an ongoing storyline and an ongoing thread for a while now and uh, it's getting more and more interesting every single week you've got you know obviously you know where does christopher daniels play in all of this uh, the Dark Order, them using the word obsolete, uh, which is, you know, quite clearly uh, an infamous reference from uh, the Hardys. But uh, give us your thoughts on this one then, buddy. Well, it's not just on TV. They've been doing it on social media as well, haven't they? Where um, when Matt Hardy got injured, um, I think the AEW account tweeted something like, oh, you say goodbye, we say hello. Uh, and Matt Hardy liked it. Uh, so that's like, you know, planting in the seeds. Um, mm. Originally, the idea would be to go to AEW, and I honestly hope he does because just the dude's like creative. His brain is just, I mean, we saw what he did when he was at TNA and he had that creative freedom and he came up with a whole broken character. Yeah. Uh, it was quite WWE signed him back, but then, you know, kind of controlled it or restricted any kind of input by the looks of it because it just never worked that well when he came back. Um, but and obviously on the flip side, you've got the, the big money contract now. WWE is, is screwing about the fact that he might go to AEW and they're apparently offering a big money contract and he's going to turn up on NXT at some point. Um, yeah. if, he doesn't go to, if he doesn't go to AEW, though, they've literally blown their load on that one word. As soon as they say obsolete, if the fans now do not get Matt Hardy... They're going to be gutted. They're going to be disappointed. Yeah, they get getting excited, kind of uh, thanks to that one word over, uh, you know, uh, over whether Matt Hardy will be joining. But um, it's it's intriguing, isn't it? It's definitely kind of getting you excited. I mean, I've never really been into the Dark Order too much, but as the week's gone on and kind of the exalted one, and now the link possibly with Matt Hardy and what's going on with Christopher Daniels, it, it, it's quite intriguing and I, I think we might get a few answers on Saturday night when uh, the Dark Order take on SEU, certainly with regards to Christopher Daniels I think anyway, but uh, then we move on to the main event section of this week's AEW Dynamites with the weigh-in for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship match. So then we had uh, somebody that I've interviewed on the Wrestling with Jonas podcast, Gary Michael Capetta. He was brought out to do the formal introductions. Uh, the Inner Circle came out with uh, with Le Champion, Chris Jericho. Uh, Moxley and Jericho took turns to be weighed, with Moxley going first. And I loved how uh, Jericho kept stalling. He took his time to be weighed. He, you know, he slowly handed over the championship belt and then a necklace and then a scarf, uh, with Jericho kind of mocking the, the Idaho fans in, in the arena. Uh, that that was pretty good, getting some proper heel heat there from the fans. Uh, Jericho then d- chose to go face to face with Moxley, but Moxley headbutted Jericho uh, pretty hard as well, uh, busting Jericho open hard way, or at least that's kind of the rumor that it was hard way. You know, with the, the kind of the the type of cut he had just above his nose, it looked like that was from uh, directly from the headbutt. And then uh, Dustin Rhodes came out, he raced out uh, to to fight it out with uh, Jake Hager. They went backstage, they fought around the concessions area. That was quite fun. Darby Allen came out again to confront Sammy Guevara, uh, with Sammy getting the better of the exchange this time round, breaking Darby's skateboard uh, across the head of its owner. Uh, Jericho and Moxie continued to fight around the ring with a very bloody Jericho connecting with the Judas Effect spinning back elbow before dropping Moxley with Moxley's very own paradigm shift on the scales as the show goes off the air with another super hot ending to this week's AEW Dynamite. So there, there was a lot to unpick here, Nick. Uh, a lot went down. Um, you know, I thought that uh, Chris Jericho played the perfect heel, really kind of healing it up with the fans. Uh, Moxley, you know, doing his usual antics, uh, the, the headbutt and, uh, you know, how it all turned out with, with Dustin Rhodes coming down. Darby Allen getting involved, a lot to unpick here. Um, but um, yeah, what, what was your thoughts on what went down during this main event segment? It was meant to be a, a weigh in. I, I, I don't think it kind of transpired that way, as these things tend to do, whether it's a contract signing or whether it's a weigh in. Uh, you know, they always end up in a bit of a brawl. But uh, this was obviously the, the go home episode before AEW uh, Revolution. And this was the go home segment, the final bit before this coming Saturday's pay per view. Uh, do you think they delivered in what they were trying to achieve with this, this final segment before uh, Revolution this Saturday? today god god yes um and i love the fact it was a weigh-in as well um it's just different 
it's, you know, a kind of, obviously everybody you knows suspension of disbelief. Um, it just made it feel different. It kind of made it feel like more of a main event, more of a title match, you know, because we've all kind of, whether we watch UFC, whether we watch boxing, you, we associate that way in with, you know, like a, an actual showbiz moment. It's something that gets the crowd hyped up for the match. And um, yeah, I thought it was, it was genius. And then, like you say, Jericho just being Jericho, guy can just draw heat. Um, like, you know, nobody's business. He, he knows how to work the crowd. The dude uh, just absolutely demonstrates this time and time again, uh, which is obviously why they put the belt on him in the first place. And um, I just think, yeah, I think it did everything it needed to do. You obviously got uh, Goldie out, uh, taking down Hager. That sets up their match. Sammy um, got a bit of revenge for early on in the show. Um, hypes up, you know, his match against Derby, um, and then the the headbutt was yeah, that was just kind of just kind of reminded me of the uh, Samoa Joker angle headbutt from back in the day in TNA where Joe busted open angle, very similar headbutt. Yeah, so they obviously planned the headbutt. You know that that that's that's for certain. But did they plan the blood? I mean, you know, uh, because we did this conversation earlier on the uh, Wrestling with John's Facebook page. You know, somebody asking, you know, did he blade or was it uh, a hard way cut? And I think you you kind of jumped in and said, you know, it, 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 it definitely was hard way as far as you're concerned. You could tell by kind of the the type of cut it was above his head or on his forehead. Um, I mean, looking at it, I'm pretty convinced it was a hard way cut. So, I mean, it makes you wonder, did they plan to have blood? Uh, because they obviously planned the headbutt spot, but did they plan to kind of get colour during that uh, during that spot as well? Um, well, I mean, you, you, you kind of, you know, you, you're fairly certain that it was a, a hard way cut. But um, give us your thoughts on the headbutt in particular. Uh, yeah, I think it's surely because, I mean, I might be wrong. I'm not saying you know, I'm, I'm 100% right. But looking at the pictures that Jericho's posted on Instagram afterwards, it just looks like a nasty cut. It doesn't look clean. It doesn't look, you know, smooth like a, a blade job would do. Um, so, yeah, that's what makes me think it's hard. I think it was the case of, you know, if we get blood, we get blood. If we don't, we don't. You know, the headbutt looks brutal as it is. If we get blood, you know, it's a cheeky bonus. Yeah, yeah, but it was just so well played. I just uh, loved every minute of it. And uh, like you say, Jericho was obviously the star of the whole segment, the way that he was, you know, giving it to the fans and uh, was giving it to Gary Michael Capetta. And, uh, you know, it, it was just absolutely, you know, he delivers every single time he's uh, in the ring uh, behind the microphone. Um, I love the kind of the backstage brawl or the around the concession stand with uh, uh, Dustin and uh, and Hager. Uh, loved all of that. But like you say, they, they you know they've been building these matches up over the last few weeks. Certainly during this episode and that main event kind of uh, segment, that main event angle kind of really helped to hype up some of the big matches at Revolution. Um, so yeah, a, a, a thumbs up episode. Um, as I said to you at the kind of the very beginning, I'm a, a big convert to uh, AEW. Um, and uh, look forward to watching it every single week. And, uh, you know, I know NXT always deliver with the wrestling action, but uh, AEW, they deliver with the wrestling and with the characters and with the angles and with the crowd heat and with the atmosphere. Um, and, uh, yeah, love every moment of AEW and this week in particular. And a really good go-home show. That That's what a go-home show should, should, should be, to get you hyped up, to get you excited for the big pay-per-view. And they definitely knocked it out of the park there. 